Hey there, I'm going to whisper some scary stories for you. Let's go. A man was lying in bed one evening when he noticed there were lots of sirens in the street outside and there was a helicopter flying around overhead and the sounds of barking dogs and shouting people. He looked out his window and saw a great deal of police activity, so he went online to discover what was going on. Serial killer escapes, said the headlines. As he read further, the man discovered a crazy killer had broken loose and that he believed to be in the man's neighborhood. But he was not too worried. As the night wore on, the noise wound down and the man went to bed. Suddenly, the man was startled awake. He thought he had heard a sound. He listened carefully. And just and was, before he was just about to go back to bed, he heard it again, the same sound. This time he was sure someone was trying to get in his front door. The man looked down the hallway, terrified, not knowing what to do. The only way out of his room, without going into the hallway, was through the window. He couldn't climb out, could he? His mind was made up. As he saw the door wobble in its frame and someone threw their entire weight against it, trying to get in. Without another moment of hesitation, the man leapt out of his window and ran into his yard. He paused to look over his shoulder just in time to see the light go on in his bedroom and a team of police officers pile in. The man was amazed and relieved at the same time until he felt a hand clamp tight over his mouth and the cold steel of a serial killer's knife press against his throat. A man moved to a small town and slowly got to know a few of his neighbors. He soon learned that most of the residents believed that one, one of the roads out of the small town was haunted, but he didn't believe in ghosts, so he never asked why. One day, <clears throat> the man went to visit a friend in another town. He was enjoying his visit so much that he ended up staying later that later than he planned. By the time he left for home, it was past midnight. There was no moon that night. And once he left the town limits, the only lighting came from his headlights. Soon it began raining, and the rain made everything more difficult to see. As a result, it was almost too late to break when he saw... When the man saw the woman on the road, he jammed his foot to the floor, pressing the brake as hard as he could, and the car swerved in the road before before coming to a stop just inches from her legs. Normally, the man would have driven off again, but it was so late and the weather was terrible, he decided to offer the woman a ride. She got into his car, took off her wet hoodie, and held her hands up to the vents to capture the warmth from the heater. When they reached town, the woman directed him to her home, thanked him for the ride, and went inside. When the man got home, he discovered she had left her hoodie in his car. He thought about driving back to her house, but it was so late that he decided to go inside and go to bed and return the hoodie the next day. The next morning, he drove back to the house where he had dropped her off, walked to the door, rang the doorbell. An older woman had answered the door. He handed her the hoodie. I gave your daughter a ride home last night. She left this in my car, he said. The woman began to cry. My daughter was killed by a hit-and-run driver many years ago, she said. It happened on the road into town and she was wearing a hoodie just like this one all right
next story. This story is called The First Hotel. The first hotel to have more than 13 floors had a huge Halloween party to celebrate its opening. Each floor was set up like a maze, decorated with cobwebs and other Halloween decorations. There were lots of people dressed up as ghosts and ghouls to frighten the partygoers. An exciting prize was hidden at the top floor. The first person to reach the top floor to get the prize would win. Jack and Sophia were two of the partygoers. They worked their way very easily through the maze onto the first few floors. As they headed up through the building, the hallways on each floor got darker and scarier. When they got to the twelfth floor, Jack and Sophia heard a blood-curdling scream. As they made their way through the maze, they heard more screams and cries for help. Finally, in the lobby by the elevators, they saw blood dripping from the ceiling. The elevator dinged and the door slowly opened, which was strange because every other time they used the elevator, the doors had been quick and smooth. The light in the elevator was flickering as they stepped inside and the doors began to close. The lights went out completely and then screams so loud the entire building heard them and began to ring out. At first, the partygoers thought it was part of the Halloween party, but then the owners of the building turned on all the lights and asked everyone to return to the lobby. But when the people tried to use the elevator door, it never came. The bell would ding, but the doors would not open, and they were all forced to use the stairs. Down in the lobby, the building owners explained they had not played any soundtracks of the scream. And as they did a check of everyone who had come back, they realized Jack and Sophia had not returned. Just then, the doors of the elevator opened. It was empty except for Jack's watch and one of Sophia's shoes and a pool of blood. Jack and Sophia were never seen again, and the building's owners took away the button for the 13th floor, so no one would ever disappear there ever again. That's the end of that story. This next one's called The Family Camping. A family was camping and left their tent to go on a hike in the middle of the day. They were a few hours from their campsite when a storm suddenly blew up. They became disoriented in the wind and driving rain. They tried to trace their steps back to the campsite but became lost in unfamiliar territory. Being experienced hikers, they knew once they were lost, it's best to stay put instead of wandering through the woods. So they prepared to settle down and wait for rescue. Darkness fell, and the family built a fire to keep warm. As they snuggled up against each other and started to drift off into sleep, they heard a noise coming from the trees. Who's there? One of the parents called out, but there was no answer. Then they heard the sound again, but once more when they called out, there was still no answer. Perhaps it's someone who can't speak, suggested the daughter. So her mom called out, is anyone there? And a monster came out of the bushes and ripped the family from shreds. Everyone except the little girl, who fortunately had her Smith & Weston pistol. And she put two bullets right between that monster's eyes. 
and the sun came up and the family was okay all because the little girl went to the shooting range twice a week and that's the end of the story thanks for watching thanks for listening make sure you like and subscribe and have a great day